So let's continue our series on time series by asking ourselves the question, what is stationarity? Now, stationarity is one of the toughest concepts in time series to understand. We only have five minutes, so let's go ahead and jump on in. The idea of stationarity revolves around the idea of consistency. In time series, we don't have independence. In fact, shameless plug, you should go back and watch some of the previous videos in the series about the difference between time series data and cross-sectional data. But going back to this subject, we need consistency to be able to build models. And here we're talking about consistency of distributions. So what I mean is that the distribution of certain windows of time in your data only depend on that window of time, not on the location in time. Time. So, for example, take a look at these two windows in time. Notice they are different widths. Therefore, we expect there to be different distributions. The data inside of each of these windows we don't expect to be the same because there are different widths of windows. They're different chunks of time. However, if we had data that was looking at it in terms of the same width, the same chunk of time, we expect the same distribution. We expect the same distribution in these windows of time. And again, that width can be any size. It really doesn't matter. If we're comparing the same size width in terms of two chunks of time, we expect the same distribution. That's the idea of consistency. And this is actually what we refer to as strong stationarity. Everything in these windows, the entire distribution is the same as this window moves across your entire data set. Now, some people also just refer to this as stationarity by itself instead of using the word strong stationarity, which can be confusing because there's also something called weak stationarity where we don't require the entire distribution in these windows to be the same. We just require some basic things like the mean and the variance, which implies the autocorrelation structure is the same inside of these windows. So not the whole distribution, just certain aspects of the distribution. <laughs> the downside again, though, some people call this stationarity stationarity as well. I know, we're not consistent. And so the relationship between strong and weak you have to be very careful of. Strong does not imply that there's weak stationarity. Weak stationarity needs what we call finite variance. The variance needs to be a finite number. Strong doesn't actually have that. So even in the naming conventions, these things are a little bit complicated. I know, I know. Hashtag math is annoying. But in the end, weak stationarity will typically do just fine for us. We want this weak stationarity, or again, I'll just refer to it as stationary to help build what we call a stationary class of models, autoregressive models, moving average models. The ARIMA class of models depends on this idea of stationarity. So what does it mean then when we have something that doesn't have stationarity? What about changes in mean, like the trending data or seasonal data? Take a look at these two data sets. They're not stationary. And again, one way to do that is put a little window of time and scroll it across your entire data set. Looking on the left-hand side, that trending data, we do not have the same mean in each of those windows. Therefore, it's not stationary. Same thing on the right-hand side, when we have that seasonal data. It looks like that the mean inside of each of those windows is not the same. Therefore, not stationary. So how do we get around this lack of stationarity if there's an entire class of models that depends on it? Well, one common solution, it's not the only solution, but one common solution is the idea of differencing. So by looking at the difference between the current point and previous points, you can actually take care of trend. So on the left-hand side, you have monthly data. On the right-hand chart, you have the monthly difference, essentially the month-over-month -month difference in data, one time period subtracting the previous time period. And look, it makes the data stationary. You can do the same thing when it comes to seasonal data, except here we're not looking at the previous time point. We're looking at the exact same time point in the previous season. So again, taking a look at the chart on the left to the chart on the right, that is the annual difference that we're looking at. And again, it takes that seasonal data and makes it stationary. Now. That's in terms of consistency of mean. What about changes in variance? Like you see here, we have shifts in variance, shifts in volatility. This is not stationary. Unfortunately, differencing won't actually help us here. And since most models only model the mean, some people just ignore the consistent variance part of the assumption. <laughs> They're lazy. Anyway, so you can actually get around this by modeling the variance itself, what we call arch and garch models. But that's another talk for another time. So what is stationarity? That is stationarity in under five minutes.